In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how we can create a Z-depth pass inside of Redshift and add depth of field to our renders inside of After Effects. Now, there are plenty of reasons why you might wanna do this, whether it's the render time, whether it's you want control and post. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's see how we can set up a Z-depth pass and add depth of field to our projects in After Effects or whatever compositing program you're using. I wanna point out though that initially when doing some tests, I was very surprised at how little difference there is in render time between doing depth of field in Redshift and without. Uh, I was expecting there to actually be more of a difference uh, with uh, depth of field taking longer, adding more time to our renders, but I'm, I wasn't really seeing that with these initial tests. Now, that being said, there is still some noise left, both in the glass as well as the blurred background here. So it wouldn't surprise me if when I went in to optimize those render settings, instead of just using the high preset here, uh, that that's where the difference really starts to come through. But still, you know, I could just as easily maybe apply a denoiser, um, you know, in After Effects or or wherever to, to kind of clean this up without having to do that. And, and then, you know, we might end up having... Um, you know, the same result render time wise. So um, I was very surprised by that. That being said, there still are some good reasons to do depth of field in After Effects, especially if your render times are very long, you may not want to re-render if you do need to make a change to your depth of field. So let's get started. I'm gonna start my IPR here in my perspective view. I do wanna point out that I am in bucket mode because it will be necessary in order to see our depth AOV. So what we need to do is add our depth AOV. So I'll pull up my Redshift um, AOV manager, add depth, all right, or Z depth as it's uh, usually called. And we can kind of get started uh, with it. Maybe make that smaller, move it down there so we can see what's happening. Make sure from our AOV list here, we choose depth. Uh, and if you were using the Redshift render view to do this, um, from the drop down that says beauty, you could choose depth right there. Now, initially, you're not going to see anything, and that's because for the filter type, actually, I'm sorry, the depth mode, we want to switch it from Z to Z normalized. And that should give us a little something here um, to kind of get started with. And actually, we could probably make this work by applying a levels to it, because essentially what we want with our depth pass here uh, is a nice gradient where objects... Um, that are closer to the camera are darker and things are gonna get lighter as they get further away. And so you really want a wide range of values in your depth pass in order to apply depth of field and have a lot of control over it. So the fact that we have pretty much everything gray here isn't ideal. Okay, though, we, like I said, we could probably make it work with a levels in After Effects, um, kind of clamping it down to get these values um, where we need them to be. If for whatever reason you want your values inverted, you can do that there. Um, at the moment, it's getting these values from our camera near far. Now, from what I've seen, these values don't actually make too much of a difference, but we can certainly kind of give it a try here. Um, so I'll go to a side view where we have our camera um, and in the object tab of our camera is where I can enable the near clip plane and the far clip plane. And I just need to set these to match my project. And so it's a little bit hard to see. All right, I'm gonna try and move it out there. It's this guy right here. And so I'm trying to place this at the front of my scene. Now, if I have animated objects, that is something I'm gonna to wanna to take into consideration there. But leaving a little bit of a gap there should work just fine. And like I said, I'm not really seeing too much of a change here, but I still think it's a good idea to set these up and I'll show you exactly why, uh, because we're gonna use these values somewhere else. So I'm turning this down, trying to get it to the back of my scene, my far clip plane. Okay, so that's pretty close. Once again, have a little bit of a, uh, a gap in there in case something's animated. And like I was saying, it doesn't really seem to be to be doing much here. So, you know, just to kind of show this, um, I'll let this finish. And then what I'll do is just, um, you know, uncheck the near and clip. And you'll see that it's pretty much the same, right? I turn these off, you know, it'll start to re-render. And the values, you know, a little bit darker, maybe overall. It is doing perhaps a little bit, but still not any we're close to what I would like this to be ideally with these front objects essentially being black and 
my uh, object furthest away from my camera being white. But like I said, I do like to use these values because what we can do is uncheck use camera near far and then use the minimum depth and maximum depth. And I'm just gonna copy and paste these values. So it still makes sense to use these values because we end up with something much, much closer to what we want when we use them in the minimum and maximum depth, okay? Still not perfect, right? I still wouldn't consider that, you know, 100% black or close to it. Um, you know, I think these are some of the further away parts of my background. They're not quite um, white, but they are definitely brighter, but we're definitely going in the right direction. And so this is pretty much how I would set this up. If for whatever reason you do need the environment rays to be a black, for, um, perhaps your compositing application prefers that, um, you know, what you'll see is some of the gaps here where we're seeing through to our background are now black. And that can help um, depending on what compositing application you're using. After Effects, it really isn't a big deal. Okay, so at this point, what we would do is render this out. All right, so you would go in, save out your AOV here, wherever you want it um, to go and, and name it something like AOV because this is actually a prefix. Um, it will add in the name of your, uh, the actual AOV to it. So I don't want the, the prefix here to be very long because I don't really care about that. I care about the name of the actual pass we're using. So let's jump on over to After Effects. I've already brought in my images that I rendered out so we can work with them inside of After Effects. I will drag them to a new composition. Here's what my depth AOV looks like, not too bad. I will drag that to the bottom and turn it off. Um, here's our image with depth of field. I'm gonna turn that off as well. I may use that for comparison purposes later on, but we're gonna work with the beauty pass that does not have depth of field. Now, there are better plugins for adding depth of field, but I'm gonna be showing you a way you can do this in After Effects without having to buy something like Frisch Left. Um, so we can come here to Blur and Sharpen, and the effect we want to use is Camera Lens Blur. Now that's gonna blur everything until we give it a blur map. And we want to use our depth AOV as our blur map. So that's what we'll choose from the dropdown here. And it's working pretty good. Um, you know, our background is, is blurring a bit. We can turn this up some um, and we'll see things get more blurry. Uh, the background is getting more blurry. The one downside of the camera lens blur effect uh, versus maybe something like Frisch Left is you know, we are getting some fringing around our elements that are in focus. And that's not what we see uh, with depth of field or with, um, you know, some more advanced depth of field plugins. So that is something to keep in mind. That being said, this doesn't look too bad. And I probably do have more blur than I would actually want there. So maybe even something like, you know, a 10 looks pretty good and we're not getting a whole lot of that. Now there's still a few things um, we could try to improve this. You know, as I mentioned on our depth AOV here, we want black and white values. And if we don't have those, if we have a lot of gray, adding a levels can help. So I can come over here to color correction. I can choose levels. And you can see we pretty much already have some uh, black values. So I don't have to bring that too far in. Okay, so those edges that stick out just a little bit are what's black. And now what we wanna do is just bring in this until we kind of reach the edge here. So now that we have more white values, that little bit there was uh, kind of our background. Um, and we want some other white values as well. So that is looking pretty good. Now to get our effect to actually use the levels, what we need to do is switch it from source to effects in masks. And that might help a little bit. I did see things change ever so slightly. It didn't, however, help with the fringing. Something else you can do here that may help with the fringing is, and that's also um, fun to adjust here, is the focal distance. Because while I was fortunate enough to have exactly what I want in focus, um, right from the beginning. If you don't, this allows you to kind of shift what's in focus. And what you'll see is I change this, is I am able to kind of slide this back and choose essentially what color I want to be in focus, right? White or black. And so not only is this property animatable, so you could shift between these, but if we were to set it maybe a little bit further back, we might be able to get rid of some of that fringing. Now it doesn't actually look like we're able to do 
a whole lot of that or that's working very well that is definitely something worth experimenting with but if nothing else we can kind of change the focus like i said this is animatable and animating our depth of field in after effects is um, going to be faster to re-render if we make a change uh, or if we need to do something different than if we were rendering out of cinema 4d you could also invert your blur map um, so if for whatever reason um, you know the the opposite is is what's blurring rather than you know, try and figure out what the blur focal distance needs to be set to. Oftentimes, I will just invert and see if that doesn't do the trick. So, like to point out that as well. And with that, you know, I think we're pretty much done. We've added our depth of field. And if we compare it to our one that we did in Redshift, you'll definitely see that we don't have a lot of that fringing there um, around the outside of our, our foreground elements. But we don't have a lot of that noise, okay? And so that can certainly be an advantage of doing our depth of field inside of After Effects. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.